Yeah. And, and when you built the company, there was maybe Fairchild, Hewlett Packard, other technology companies as models. What did you decide to adopt and what did you decide to do different in building a culture? I don't know that we made such a conscious decision of doing that. They, what we ended up with a very different culture, as right. you know. It was a Google-like culture today, but Google did it consciously with a reason. They thought this was a good way of bringing in and stimulating employees. We stumbled onto it. We stumbled onto it because we were a company owned by its employees. And so the employees had a lot to do and say about how the company was run and managed. And that just led to an environment like a Google-like environment. And give them a couple of examples of what was unique that was different. Do you remember? I, it's hard to point to any one thing, Steve, but it was, I would say it was most of the employees who worked here would say, particularly when I left, they told me there was like a family working here. People felt a bond to each other. It was collegial. And I thought part of that bond, and I think all of it went back to the idea that it was a comp an employee-owned company. It was their company. I have a, uh, I had a Navy captain who was my military aide when I was the Secretary of Defense, and he later went on to command a ship. And his way of, of commanding that ship, which was quite unmilitary-like, was anybody would come to him and say, here's a problem, what should I do with it? And he said, it's your ship. <laughs> it's your ship. Do what you think would be best if you owned the ship. Well, that was sort of the attitude in the company. It's your company. What's the right thing to do? It's your company. Do the thing which you think is best. Now, you had a view about customers. I remember you transmitted to your employees about how you treated customers and how you thought about them. It's maybe worth sharing with people today who think that customers exist to buy products. I, Certainly for our company, and I think for probably for most companies, to succeed, the leadership of the company has to identify and associate themselves with the customer's problems and try to, you're there to solve their problems. And if you, if you, stay, if you believe that, if you act on that, you end up with a very successful marketing program and a successful company. But you have to believe it. It's not just a matter of saying it. You have to believe it and, and act on it. So for that reason, we ended up with, um, became very dedicated customers who understood that we, that we took their problems very much to heart. And, and they were incredibly loyal to you, and, and I they think were. vice versa. Yeah. You were doing things that were normally sometimes the province of the customer and sitting side by side with them. We were acting like the customer sometimes, but in the customer's interest.